Um, so my name is Michael Bendit. I'm co-hosting this with David Berkowitz. Um, uh, David, of course, runs Serial Marketers. So he'll tell you a little bit about that. I'm going to take a minute to tell you a bit about the Trusted Referral Network. Uh, then after David, we'll hand it over to Marnie. Um, and Marnie's going to speak for 20 to 25 minutes or so, um, maybe 30 minutes. And then we'll, we should have time for, for breakouts because uh, we have a large enough crowd that it probably makes sense to, uh, to do some breakouts. Um, so uh, the Trust Referral Network is a network of independent marketing services professionals, marketing, sales, advertising. Um, we um, have a, uh, we get together on once a week virtually uh, for networking um, by the name Trusted Referral Network, uh, as it implies a lot of it is about helping each other <clears throat> um, bring in new business, collaborating, um, uh, and getting to know one another and helping each other out. Uh, the, we also have a directory website called the, called trustref.net. Um, what was it called? Uh, trustref.net, T-R-U-S-T, ref, R-E-F, dot net. Um, and I will put that in the, um, the chat at some point. Um, and check it out. We have about 165 members now. Um, all independent marketing people around the country. Uh, and if you well, have an interest in it, um, please uh, let me know and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, David, do you want to uh, do a quick intro? Uh, yeah, so uh, so good to see a lot of familiar faces and, and perhaps a few uh, newer members of the community. So I run the Serial Marketers community and I am... Uh, which has been going on for uh, about uh, three and a half years now. And so we're connecting nearly 3,000 members and it's you know, for marketers who need marketers too. And so nice. I've been, been really excited to have, uh, uh, so I've been really excited to, to have Marnie be the first guest to reboot the salon series and, and Michael, who's just doing an amazing amount of programming for TRN to, go and, uh, and, and help take this on and, and bring our communities together because there are uh, definitely a lot of folks who do biz dev and a lot of you know, connections among companies who, uh, who find serial marketers useful. And there are, uh, I'm sure, quite a number of members of the serial marketers community who, who uh, if they don't know Michael and his network yet, they, they need to because uh, I was going to events of his in person well before I had a community and, and thought I was such a thought it was such a big deal that he even let me sit at the table at some of his uh, exclusive gatherings so uh, uh, I'm, I'm still similarly honored uh, but but now great to actually get to partner him, with him in these ways and uh, and I'll put a link to the uh, I'll put a link to the community in case there are a few you just not aware of that yet and then uh uh i mean i'm most excited though to bring marnie onto the stage because marnie and i not only uh, collaborated for uh in in various ways especially through work at the association of national advertisers but uh she and i also collaborate on the binghamton marketing collective i don't know if we have any other any other Bearcats or Colonials, as, as uh, some of you uh, might have been, depending on your era, but um, uh, but we are both uh, the adults in the room who, who get to advise to just this uh, amazing group, and and we actually just did a uh, a big like a hundred person plus a student mentoring event the other day that was fantastic, and so uh, and and Marty, I will say she has been hands down one one of the biggest advocates for the community and also without a doubt the single biggest refer of brand side folks into the community so that when there are brand side people looking to yeah, take a look beyond you know, their immediate walls and start getting out there more and connecting with others then i like i i you know i ask in my default form how people found out about this and marnie's name has popped up not just often but so consistently and i get alerts on linkedin just out of the blue that yeah this is uh, that i'm tagged in one of marnie's posts and 
And whether it's five people or 500 who are interacting with Marnie's poets, like people are always taking action. She has an amazing new newsletter and Marnie definitely need to put a link in the chat to your newsletter on career guides. And I'm sorry if I'm taking too long singing Marnie's praises. But <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't mind. We're fine. I, with I, it. I, 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 I can't recommend enough following her on LinkedIn, reading her newsletter. Um, it's just, it's just such a treat. And so so there was one person on my short list when we were rebooting this series and it was Marnie. And fortunately she said yes. So good. Uh, and we are, we are planning on doing this monthly, the third Wednesday of every month at this time. So 5 PM uh, Eastern. Um, and the, the general topic is what's new in marketing. Um, if people have suggestions, recommendations uh, for topics, please let me or David know. Um, and uh, Marnie, um, why don't you take it away and uh, you can share your screen. Uh, yeah. If everybody else could go on mute. Uh, and if you have questions, pop them into the chat. I think that's the easiest way during the presentation. Um, and at the end, we'll go through those questions um, if they're still relevant, of course, and then we'll do some breakouts. Sounds great. I'm just going to share my screen over here. Hopefully this will work. Here we go. Can everyone see it? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much, David, for inviting me to do this. It's funny. I've worked at, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself in a second. I've worked at the a a for almost 13 years. And most of my time there has been recruiting other people to speak at events. And this was the first time that I was actually invited to speak. So I was very honored and super excited to be here. Um, like David said, you know, we really, um, you know, we knew each other from the industry, but really got to know each other through the Binghamton Marketing Collective. And I am a huge fan of serial marketers. Um, in fact, David, FYI, the new, it happens to be next week's newsletter, which comes out on Tuesday, um, is all about the power of, um, of uncovering the hidden job market and how to do that through networking. And I actually mentioned serial marketers with a link in there. Well, so, thank you. And, and check it out. I know you're on my list. I, I, I'll, I'll find out because as soon as you say anything, I see like, oh, Marnie sent me just like popping up left and right. So, so thank you. Oh, no, of course. I, I'm just naturally a huge fan of it. I, I love what you've done with this community, um, with your community. And now I'm, I've become even more active on the Slack channel, um, which I've just been, I was just enjoying the newsletters, but now I'm kind of into Slack and into the community and it's great. So I highly recommend everybody join that. Um, so that's a Thanks for joining me today. I literally thought there were going to be like you know, me, David, Michael, and three other people. So this is an awesome crowd and I appreciate you taking the time to hear what I have to say. Um, so just to kind of start off a little bit about me and my background. So it's funny, like usually people kind of say they fall into marketing or it was kind of an accident. I was actually an anomaly and I, I knew like as early as third grade uh, that I loved marketing. I obviously didn't know what it was, but um, you'll see the, the first picture over there is, you know, a bunch of paper cups. I actually used to have a paper cup collection um, with different logos on them. And I'd make my parents go from like, you know, fast food restaurant to, you know, different places because I was just fascinated by logos. And, you know, over time through middle school and high school, I, you know, I subscribed, believe it or not, to Ad Age as a kid. My parents bought the subscription for me. And as we all know, it's not cheap. Um, so, you know, it meant a lot to me to be able to read it. And then I went to SUNY Binghamton, not Binghamton University. <laughs> we were the colonials at the time. Um, and, um, you know, and, and my major was in management, concentrated in marketing. Um, when I was there, I volunteered at the Career Development Center. Um, which really, you know, was life changing for me, um, you know, because I, you know, I'm really like passionate about like helping other people like kind of find a career that they love. Um, right out of school, uh, my first job was at Scholastic and I worked as an advertising coordinator <laughs> in their magazine department. Um, and through there, you know, if I stayed, I would have been promoted um, to, you know, 
to a more of a senior level in production. And that's not where I wanted to go with my career, but I learned from the sales reps there that media planning existed. Um, and in school, it was just kind of a chapter in a textbook. Um, so I, you know, started from the, you know, from the bottom again, um, sent cold, you know, resumes and cover letters through snail mail, no email at that time, <laughs> and ended up working at Gray, which is now Mediacom. Um, also, you know, went from there after a couple of years to J. Walter Thompson, working in media planning there. And then when J. Walter Thompson merged with Ogilvy & Mather in 2000 um, to form Mindshare, you know, I see there as well. And most of my experience um, media agency side has really been in consumer packaged goods. Um, so I worked on Warner Lambert um, before Pfizer bought it, um, mainly on chicken roll aids. I worked on Unilever a couple of times. Um, my first tour of duty was actually working on Lever 2000, which I'm not sure if any of you remember that brand. If I talk to anyone right out of school, they're like, huh? Um, <laughs> no clue. Um, and then I worked on Gillette when we won and lost it at Mindshare and, um, and Sprint. And then, um, in 2009, um, which was the Great Recession, so not as bad as we're at at COVID, but it was you know pretty bad economically. I found that myself and all of my friends were all laid off from Montier. Um, and it was really like a, a dark and scary time. It was in, also an interesting social experiment, I feel like to be to be laid off and you know you start reaching out to people in your network and you know, I found, I don't know if anyone else has, that um, people that you, some people that you thought you were really close to, um, your emails went into cyberspace. But then there were other people who I hadn't spoken to in 10 or 15 years, and I just kind of let them know I was laid off. And they really, you know, went over and above and beyond to, you know, to help me out. And ever since that, and that was kind of my first foray into feeling ageism. And I was in my, you know, my thirties at the time. Um, but, you know, what I, what I had found then, and I still continue to find now more than ever is that, you know, ageism is real, especially, you know, in the marketing and advertising industry. So you kind of have to, you know, realize that and, you know, and figure out what to do next. So once I, um, after I was laid off from Mindshare, um, I was lucky, honestly, and in a couple of months, I ended up landing a job through MediaBistro.com at a and um, For those of you who may not be familiar with a and it's the Association of National Advertisers, and it's really the largest marketing trade organization. So a lot of, you know, thousands of companies are members from large companies like Procter & Gamble and um, Coca-Cola to small and mid-sized companies as well. And, um, anyone at those companies who, you know, anyone, if Coca-Cola um, buys an a, a membership, anyone at Coca-Cola, for example, can take advantage of our benefits. So I spent most of my time, so almost 12 years, uh, responsible for programming and marketing a lot of our conferences, committees, and webinars, including our our you know premier conference, for those of you who may have heard of it, or the a, a Masters of Marketing Conference, which with CMOs all sharing their stories about growth. Um, I still, even in my new role at the a, &A Educational Foundation, um, which I'll talk about in a second, I still work with our CEO, Bob Leides, to program that event, because um, I think I have so much history in it. Um, but about last March, I actually moved roles internally and now work at the a, &A Educational Foundation, which I was really, I'm very passionate about their mission. And I think I was annoying my boss for so many years that I wanted to be a part of it, that when there was an opening, he like helped me, you know, connect because he knew how much I wanted to be a part of it. And the, um, you know, in case you're not familiar, the a, a Educational Foundation is a 501c3 charitable foundation, a division of the a, a Then we're all about bridging the gap between marketing academia, so marketing students and professors, and marketing industry to hopefully inspire and educate the next generation of talent to come into our industry. So my role there is, and that's my day job, um, is I'm responsible for our partnerships. So it's really um, fundraising and donations. 
We have the Give the Gift of a a University membership program where companies actually donate a a memberships to universities to help bring industry into the classroom. And we also have an annual um, gala called Honors Night. And we're launching a new partnership program in a couple of months and things like that. Um, during the pandemic, um, actually right before the pandemic hit, um, I felt like, you know, especially since when I was laid off um, in 2009, I, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, I remember that experience where people really went out of their way to help pay it forward for me, um, whether I was really close with them or not. And I always felt like, well, I appreciated that. And I always wanted to be in that pay it forward position. So I kind of automatically kind of became this go-to at the ANA with our members of people who were in transition, people who were just looking for their next thing and still had a job. And they would kind of come to me and help, you know, and I would like set up calls with them and I still do brainstorm ideas to, you know, to network and to help them find, find a career that they love. Um, right before the pandemic hit, I discovered really scrolling on LinkedIn on New Year's Day, watching The Odd Couple and Honeymooners Marathons with my family, um, that you can actually, that the career of being an executive and career coach existed. And a lot of people with my background um, went into that. So um, I started checking it out. And then once we locked down in March, 2020, I basically networked like a crazy person just to figure out what it was all about, find out, you know, what kind of training was needed, um, find out more about the ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation. It's almost like the gold standard for coaching, like the a is for marketing. And um, went back, got my certificate in career and executive coaching through NYU. And I've been actually most of my clients career coaching on the side um, are mar- happens to be marketers 40 plus, um, uh, you know, cause they, they're going through, you know, what's really accelerated now, you know, ageism and many are in transition or just kind of trying to figure out their next step. Um, I also, as David mentioned, I also just launched um, a free newsletter. It's called Career Chat with Marnie. Um, And every other week um, I'll share, really kind of touch on hot career topics, um, talk about, you know, best practices on networking and really trying to kind of help, you know, the, the, the newsletter community that I'm building just, you know, find a career that they love. Um, so, I, you know, recommend, I put the um, the link in the chat and the next issue comes out, like I was saying on Tuesday and, and that one happens to be all about the um, power of the hidden job market and the power of networking to find it. So that's about me. Um, I don't see it oh. in the chat. Did you hit return? Did you put it in there? Oh, um, hold on, let me see. Or did you put it further up? I thought I did um, hit return. It's in there. I see it. I see it. Okay, good. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, so we're here not to talk about me, but to talk about ageism. So what I found through my own experience and definitely through coaching, you know, many marketers, um, especially during the pandemic, it's real. And, you know, just like a stat that was eye-opening for me is that, you know, if you look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average age of a marketing manager is 39.7 versus 45.8 for all other managerial jobs. Um, It, you know, it just kind of brings it all to light. I, you know, again, I've, you know, been witnessing this, you know, many shape, ways, shapes, and forms, but, um, you know, it's, it's definitely real and it's really been accelerated due, you know, due to COVID um, because companies, you know, have been, you know, laying off a lot of people and, you know, unfortunately, you know, marketers and, and people in advertising 40 plus have, have been, you know, the hardest hit. And, you know, while marketing and advertising, you know, during the, the industry, during the pandemic, you know, have been very responsive to, you know, gender issues, even before the pandemic, race, especially during the pandemic with George Floyd, um, you know, sexual harassment, there's still no significant movement against ageism. Um, 
I feel like people start to kind of bring it up, but but everyone's afraid of it. And it was kind of interesting. I posted, um, I did a, a newsletter on ageism and I posted about it on LinkedIn and it was the least, you know, it was the, the post with like the least likes and comments. And it's almost like people were afraid to even be associated with the topic in public. Um, so I, I, I kind of thought that was interesting. And you know, while while this issue has been swept under the rug and people are are free to address it, it's very real. Um, and it can be frustrating. You know, I found, you know, many marketers 40 plus are, you know, it, it's frustrating when they apply for jobs and they know that they're completely qualified, but they're not getting to the next step. They're not getting interviews and not getting those final jobs because they know it's their age. Um, you know, and it's also, you know, some marketers that I've worked with have been, for example, have been at their jobs for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years and have never really had to build their network. And all of a sudden they find themselves like, all right, well, what do I do next? Like, how do, how do I get started? I never had to work to get a job before. And now nobody's going to talk to me, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, so it's definitely difficult. What, you know, what I've been seeing um, with, you know, with the marketers that I've been coaching and even from my day members I know from my day job at the a a is a lot, you know, as it's harder, you know, as we get older to find those full-time jobs because it is, you know, harder, not impossible, but harder to, you know, to get them. Um, a lot of marketers have been turning to portfolio, developing portfolio careers for themselves. Um, and, you know, and what that is, it's really a way to rely on multiple stre streams of income, not just one. So you have your full-time job, you put all your eggs in one basket. Um, in portfolio career, you can do two, three, four different things, you know, it could be a mix of freelancing or part-time employment or coaching or consulting. Um, and it's been a trend for several years, but it's really come to light in the pandemic especially as we all work, you know, have been working remotely. Um, and, you know, it's easier to kind of hop from one thing to another. Um, I don't know if anyone has heard this term. There's a term also now that's called like overemployment, where there are actually people out there um, who, who have like multiple full-time jobs. Um, and are able to juggle it. And, and there's even a site, I think, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's like overemployment.com, something like that, where people are sharing their stories, how they're literally not, a, not juggling part-time, but juggling like multiple full-time jobs. Cause you can, you can do that now. Um, and then, you know, this stat from the organization of economic cooperation development predicted that half of professionals are going to be in a portfolio career by 2030. I completely agree that, you know, the, with that, the pandemic brought so much more, you know, there were a lot of tough things with it, but it brought a lot of flexibility. Um, and, you know, and it's kind of easier to, to work on multiple things at the same time without commuting. Um, so some of the benefits of having a portfolio career you know, it's a great way to get paid for all of, you know, many years of experience that you may have, you know, in marketing, advertising, whatever field you may be in, um, you know, as a consult, you know, respected consultant or an advisor or a fractional CMO, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, in a few minutes. Um, and on your own terms, on your own hours, um, you put in as many hours as you'd like, um, you know, for it and, and set your own rate for that. Um, it's also a great way to, you know, continue to strengthen your own network and, you know, do a lot of different types of, you know, learn a lot of different types of businesses and, and do a lot of different things that you may love, whether it's, um, are surrounded by your normal like day job, let's say if that's marketing, or you could pursue other interests and passions outside of that. Um, I mean, I read an article that um, one person was, you know, she does some marketing consulting and then she also practices yoga and teaches yoga on the side. So you can do a lot of different things and kind of keep it interesting. Um, and, you know, and like I was saying before, people are, are really a lot more open to uh, working online and remotely, you know, given the pandemic. 
Um, so that could, that flexibility can result in even more clients, more opportunities, and, um, you know, maybe even juggling multiple full-time jobs, like I was saying before. Um, so, you know, so I talked about, a, a mentioned a fractional CMO before. So what, you know, in case you're not familiar with what that is, it's, re they're really hired by a company, um, part-time or on, you know, a consulting basis, really for their marketing leadership, um, you know, and to kind of ultimately help with pro maybe product launches or customer acquisitions or, um, you know, just driving growth in general from an integrated marketing perspective. Um, you know, it's a great benefit for the company who's typically, you know, mid-sized, small, a lot of startups use fractional CMOs. Um, because they get the, you know, executive experience um, and, you know, without hiring a full-time, you know, marketing CMO, you know, to kind of, you know, really be able to come in, address their, you know, immediate needs. And then, you know, maybe who knows, it could turn into a long-term gig, but at least in the short term, you know, in the first like six months to a year, um, you know, it's a great way to, you know, for that, for the startups to be able to tap into someone's experience and kind of get everything up and running. Um, and, you know, it's also great from the startups perspective, because they're getting a senior marketer's experience, but they don't have to, you know, pay, you know, full salary and benefits for that. Um, and then for, you know, the fractional CMOs, you know, getting involved they're able to, you know, work on this, you know, get paid, you know, nicely for their experience, and then also have multiple opportunities without just putting all their eggs in one basket and working for one company. Um, so here are three ways to kind of get started if you're considering, you know, a portfolio career or even tangentially something, you know, on the side. Um, so there are a lot of companies out there that specialize in um, matching um, freelancers with marketing jobs. Here are just some examples. There are many more. Um, we Are Rosie is definitely one that I recommend, you know, checking out um, at that, you know, it, it's a great, so it, it really saves you from having to kind of go out and get your own clients. Um, and it's a great way to just kind of get some extra, you know, extra work. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm like, you know, David and Michael, I'm a huge proponent of networking. I, you know, I'm big on networking from, you know, myself. And what I found during the pandemic, especially is people are more willing to talk and talk to you and have that 30 minute call because everyone's so isolated. They're dying to talk to anybody. And especially people love to talk about themselves. Um, so, you know, even if you, you know, you start with, you know, reaching out to your, you know, past coworkers, people from the industry, um, and kind of send them, you know, a quick, you know, LinkedIn message or, you know, an email, whatever you have and say, you know, Hey, I'd love to learn more about, um, you know, whatever your company or your industry and, you know, hear, you know, learn any insights, um, or advice that you, you know, may be willing to share with me. Um, you know, and I'm also interested in, you know, picking up some part-time work and, you know, just kind of, um, get, you know, initially get that 30 minute call and kind of pick their brain. And then, you know, ultimately what you want to do is continue that relationship. You know, you don't want to go to them and say, oh, I'm looking for a job and, you know, please keep me in mind. Like that's going to fall really flat. Um, it's, it's really like, it's kind of like, you know, the way that I see David, as he works with his community, it's, it's like that servant leadership mindset. It's like, how can I, you know, help you person in my network that I've reached out to, you know, what can I do for you in the future? What can I do for you now? Um, I even had like, for example, a college student who um, reached out to me from Binghamton who reached out to me and I had a, a networking call and she was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll help you, you know, if you ever need help with Canva or putting presentations together, you know, definitely let me know. And it's not something that I would ever take advantage of, you know, from somebody else, but I just thought it was nice that she offered, you know, so it, you know, kind of being in that, how can I help you mindset? will you help you not only build your network, but, you know, sustain your network. And, you know, even just with networking in general, you know, to try to find those 
portfolio career opportunities. Um, I actually had a lot of luck, believe it or not, with our um, Binghamton University alumni directory. Um, when I was networking with a lot of people for coaching back in the pandemic, early in the pandemic, um, I made a lot, I made a lot of like cold calls just to people who went to the same school that I did and got an, a lot of amazing connections from there. Um, even just putting keyword searches into LinkedIn, um, you know, to kind of, you know, find people that way. I even that people responded to me, they had no idea who I was and, and I was willing to have a conversation. So, um, so those are just like some, you know, some of my I get things that work for me and hopefully the, you know, some tips and tricks for you. Um, and then I also recommend, you know, if you really feel stuck and you're, you know, you're not sure where to go next and you're looking for someone to kind of help you really figure, you know, develop your own insights and ultimately action plan and accountability for your career or for whatever, you know, that you'd want to, you know, you might want to work on, whether it's, you know, your career or leadership issue, um, having gone through the NYU coaching program, and now as a career coach and being coached myself, um, there's definitely a lot of benefits to kind of having that partner that, you know, that career coach as your partner to really kind of be that mirror for you and, you know, and help you see what's holding you back so that you can, you know, create your action plan based on whatever your goal is and kind of move yourself forward. Um, so that's really it. I, you know, my, my big advice and mantra is like, life is short. You got to love your career. Um, you know, so two ways to, you know, to connect with me is, um, you know, subscribe to my newsletter. It's free. And, um, you know, I, I try to give a lot of, um, you know, tips and tricks on all different, you know, issues, um, you know, around careers and help people out. And if you do subscribe and would love to just hear your feedback, um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly just trying to make it better as I go. Um, and then please definitely feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I also just share a lot of, reshare a lot of job opportunities from um, what I see in my network, because I'm connected to uh, around 3,500 um, followers, mostly in marketing. And, you know, what I, what I've been trying to do, especially since the pandemic hit is kind of be that fire hose to share as many jobs as possible from what I'm seeing. So everybody in my network sees it, um, and, you know, and, and can apply if you know, they're interested. So, um, so that's it for me. <laughs> but thank you so much for listening and for having me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marnie, uh, for sharing your expertise.